The Saxmundham experiment is a 120 year old experiment on a clay soil in Suffolk. Originally set up to test how phosphate and potassium fertilizer compared to the more traditional methods of the day of farm and manure applications. After a few years of inactivity, the Morley Agricultural Foundation, delivered through NIAV TAG, took over the running site in 2015. With wider concerns about how high phosphate soils impact the environment, and with a finite supply of rock phosphate, two new modern pea management techniques have been introduced this autumn. The trial uses large 5.5 times 40 metre plots. Treatments are replicated, although not randomised. There are a set of seven annual treatment applications that remain relatively consistent through the 120 years. These are a farmyard manure currently at 25 tonnes a hectare, phosphate fertiliser, potassium fertiliser, phosphate and potassium fertiliser, and an untreated, receiving no P or K additions. There are also two historic treatments, one that used to receive regular additions of bone meal, another with just a nitrogen treatment. However, these haven't been applied for over 30 years. The mineral fertiliser applications are intended to meet crop demands. Currently, we aim to maintain index 2 in the soils for the applied nutrient. All nitrogen and pesticide applications are typical of local best practice. So how have 120 years of contrasting nutrient management impacted soil chemical properties? Here we present the average of the last three years of measurements, with the error bars representing the maximum and the minimum across those years. Starting with phosphate, the plots receiving P additions, either as fertiliser or manure, have averaged an index 2 and above. The treatments that receive no P additions are all low index 1 or index 0 soils. For potassium, the plots receiving K fertiliser or manure average an index 2. Although treatments not receiving any potassium record lower soil K reserves, we don't see such a dramatic drop as we do with phosphate. This is a result as the naturally K releasing soils going some way to buffering that taken off by the crop. Soil organic matter levels are similar across treatments not receiving any manure. The plots receiving for farming up manure are currently measuring on average 0.6% higher than untreated. Although this doesn't sound a lot, it's important to think about this in context. This is actually a 16% relative increase. Note that the bone meal and the historic end treatment that have not received any inputs for a number of years have P, K and organic matter levels similar to untreated. Because of this, from the autumn 2019, these treatments were replaced with techniques relevant to 21st century phosphate and soil management. The historic end plots will now receive a 26% foliophosphate fertiliser applied at 15 litres a hectare at four timings through the season. Here you can see the second application going on to this year's wheat crop in early May. Through this, we aim to provide a better understanding of how much of a crop's pea demand can be met through foliar sprays, while maintaining a low pea indice soil and therefore minimising environmental risk. The historic bone meal plots have been replaced with an annual application of 25 tonnes a hectare of green waste compost. The question being, can by increasing soil organic matter, we maintain yields on a phosphate index 1 soil? Compost was first applied in autumn 2019 using a small plot spreader, as seen here from a worm's eye view. This is the same machine used for the farmyard manure applications. Thankfully, this means improvised shields are no longer needed. It's not just the treatments that have increased relevance. Monitoring is using 21st century technologies such as remote sensing and detailed grain nutrient analysis. The NDVI image here showing the 2018 rape crop where we saw the low pea soil treatments suffer from severe pigeon damage. Highlighting an important message that poor soil nutrient management exposes crops to risks other than just nutrient deficiency. In addition, an on-site weather station allows the interactions between weather and treatment to be explored. Also, in the summer of 2019, a new field drain connecting to the existing clay pipe system was installed. A new outflow seen here flowing well following a wet winter. For more details on the experiment, visit the TMAF website. Annual reports with detailed soil and agronomic results can be found on the NIAB membership platform and the TMAF website.